I'm trying really hard to make this video in the beautiful weather, but I'm fighting allergies. I've got my notes here to keep me on track because I like to tangent and I don't want to do that. So work with me. So today's video about love has to do with love and salvation, or rather why salvation works because of love. To do this, I'm going to briefly cap over several facets of love that are important to make this point, and some of these I'll dive deeper into in other videos, but they're important just to make the point for this video. So we're going to start off with a couple important pieces of love. So first two important points. Love is freely given and unconditional. It is not deserved because it cannot be earned. There's no resume that can make you good enough to be worthy of it. A common affirmation that I hear a lot is, I am worthy of love. Close, but not quite. See, just in saying this, you are setting a some kind of bar to reach to be worthy of love. So I would have to ask you why? Define for me then what makes somebody worthy or unworthy to be loved. The best answer you could give is existing makes me worthy of love, but now what you're saying is that love is an entitlement. This can't be the case because love is freely given. If you're entitled to something, then it means that it rightfully belongs to you by default. You own it or you created it. So if you say, I am worthy of love by entitlement, then you are treating love as something that must be given to you. And if it must be given to you, then it's not freely given because freedom implies choice. The fact is that you and I do not own love. We did not create it with our bodies or our minds. 1 John 4, 7 says, love comes from God. God owns the title to love, which means one, he is the only one who can be worthy of love. Two, love is a force that exists outside of ourselves, as in with or without us. And three, love is something freely given to us by God who owns it for us to use and experience. So the correct statement is not, I am worthy of love but instead, I have worth, I am loved. The implication now is I have worth because I exist and I am loved because God freely gives his love to me. Now, if that's what saying I'm worthy of love means to you, then I'm not here to argue semantics and you can keep using it. I just urge you to be careful about what your words can imply. So, Love is freely given and unconditional. Unconditional means that you never have to be enough for somebody to love you. You see, a healthy relationship is not two people who continually earn each other's love, or it shouldn't be because we all screw up sometimes. So if your relationship is based on a point system, then I pray you mark that box fragile this side up in every language so wherever it goes, it's gonna be safe and doesn't get mishandled. See, you can never be good enough to earn love. No, a healthy relationship is when two people are freely giving love to each other in a cycle. There's nothing you can do to cancel that love. It's unconditional. That's a good thing. If you can't ever be good enough to earn love, it means that you can't ever be bad enough to lose it. This means that love is everlasting. You either love someone forever or you never love them at all. This is why salvation works the way it does. No refunds or exchanges. Romans 8.38, nothing can separate us from God's love. And here is the point of this video now. I ask you, why does salvation work? What exactly is saving us? stereotypical simple answer, well, Jesus sacrificed himself for our sins and rose again, which conquered death. Factually correct, but we're leaving out the important part and also implying that death was ever the problem. <laughs> the right answer is 
salvation works because love. That's why. Let me walk through this. Death was never the problem. Before his own sacrifice, Jesus had already brought people back from the dead. Some of his followers had brought people back from the dead through the power of the Holy Spirit. And besides, our souls are eternal, so only our earthly bodies die and our soul, the core of who we are, will just move on to either heaven or hell. Well, why do we need saving? What's the problem? Well, when God first created us, he dwelled with us. Adam and Eve literally walked with God. When we sinned, we separated ourselves from God. It was the consequence of our actions. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. But Hannah, you just said death was not the problem. It's not. <laughs> we have immortal souls and mortal bodies. Death is a construct that we understand as permanent loss and separation. This person is not coming back. We will never see them again. They are gone from this world. What better way to illustrate hell, the permanent separation from God spent in suffering, which is the consequence of our choice to sin. This verse is not God saying, if you choose sin, your body or your soul will die. This verse is God saying, if you choose sin, you're dead to me. Ooh, you ever heard that phrase before? Have you ever said that phrase before? It hurts, doesn't it? But saying it doesn't kill anybody, it just means you're going to keep living as if they do not exist. So the problem is not literal death. The problem is that we separated ourselves from God. We did him wrong. We cheated. We broke the rules. We ruined the trust. And he could have left it right there. He could have said, you know exactly what you did and you deserve what you get. And he would be right. I would venture to say that all of us have either been cheated on or otherwise deeply wronged in a relationship, or somebody close to you has been wronged. It's the other person's fault. There is no blurry line. You don't encourage your best friend to give their cheating, lying ex a second chance. God is well within his rights to say, this relationship didn't work. You didn't want me. You did the one thing I asked you not to do. We're over. You made your bed, now lie in it. Goodbye forever, you're dead to me. That's what most of us would do. We lose friendships and marriages over it. But I didn't finish the verse. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Hey, what else is freely given? love. The problem is that we separated from God, but he still loved us because love is unconditional and everlasting. He did not want us to be separated from him forever, so he had to make a way to keep the door open to forgive us for how we wronged him so that we could choose to come back. He didn't hold a grudge. He said, I don't like what you did. It hurt, but I do love you. Come back to me. Our souls are already eternal. The free gift is his love that allows us to spend eternity with him and truly feeling alive. I just don't think we emphasize enough the importance of love in salvation. See. Love is the reason Jesus' sacrifice works at all. Because 1 Peter 4.8, love covers over a multitude of sins. We had a perfect relationship and we broke it. The only thing that fixes a broken relationship that solves the problem of separation is love. It's unearned, unconditional love. John 3.16, for God so loved 
the world, that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. First John 3.16, we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. First John 4.10, this is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. John 15, 13, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. The problem is that only perfect love could fix a perfect relationship that had been broken. We're not capable of perfect love because we cannot earn love and we're not worthy of it. Jesus is our greatest example of love. He is perfect, he has the title to love and he performed the greatest act of love to bridge our separation from God. We only have to choose to accept it. God said, I want you back. I left the light on and the door unlocked. You just have to choose to enter that relationship. You have to choose love. That's what solves the problem. Choosing love. That's what fixes a broken relationship and brings two people together again. It is officially nighttime and I refuse to take off my sunglasses for the ending of this video just for consistency. I don't know if you're like me and you grew up on Disney fairy tales. <laughs> Maybe I'm a fool, but I believe in meant to be and happy ever after and miracles because even though those stories are fiction, I know love is real. In the Disney universe, the most powerful magic is love. And in our real world, the most powerful force we have is love. All those stories that told me love will save you if you just believe are right. God's love saves us if we choose to believe. Every fairy tale has darkness. Every hero endures evil and faces impossible circumstances. But remember, our lives aren't any different. And if we choose to believe, then in the end, True love conquers all. And that, friends, is a little bit about love and a lot about why salvation works because of love.